Hey, what's going on, Josh? This is Internet from Sunduck Film, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how I'm the internet. Now, but really, we are gonna talk about After Effects and motion graphics, and one of the consistent themes that I've been preaching on this channel, you know, is how to produce, you know, better work, and of course, form your own style. So in this video, I'm bringing on Jordan Bertone, who has a really strong style for motion graphics, and he's gonna talk about some visually striking, you know, ideas, and put together this really cool composition, so, you know, you're able to take away some of these ideas, so you can help form your own style, create depth into your work, and honestly, just have some new concepts for your motion graphics, so it's gonna be a fun tutorial. I'm gonna hand it over to Jordan, but before I do, be sure to smash that like button because it helps us out so much, you have no idea. And if you're new to our channel and you haven't already subscribed, are you crazy, man? We do some really cool tutorials on here for After Effects and motion graphics. So let's jump over the Jordan Bridge and we'll join them in After Effects. Hey everyone, this is Jordan, and today I'm gonna to show you four techniques to recreate this visually striking composition for yourself in After Effects. For our first technique, we're going to take some stock footage and use a combination of effects to create this awesome distorted reveal effect. So to start out, we have some stock footage on our timeline. You can use whatever you like. I just got this from a royalty-free stock footage website. What we're gonna do is right-click the stock footage, select pre-compose, we'll name the pre-comp footage, make sure move all attributes into new composition is highlighted, and then click OK. Now double-click the pre-comp to open it, go up to composition, composition settings, and we're gonna set the aspect ratio to 1080 by 1920, which is just 1080p but vertical, then click OK. Next, highlight the footage, Press S to adjust the scale and resize it so it fills the entire composition. This may or may not be necessary depending on the size of the stock footage that you have. Now go back to the main composition, highlight the pre-comp we just made and set the scale to 50%. We have our pre-comp set up the way that we want so now we can start working on the reveal effect. With the pre-comp highlighted, go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displays, Effect, Distort, Displacement Map, and Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Vector Blur. Now go up to the Effect Controls panel and under Turbulent Display set the displacement to Twist Smoother, set a keyframe for Amount and set the Amount to 2000. For Displacement Map, set a keyframe for Max Horizontal Displacement and set it to 7000, then set the Max Vertical Displacement to 0. And for CC Vector Blur, set a keyframe for Amount and set it to 70. Next, press the U key to show all the keyframes. Move forward 30 frames by holding down the shift key and pressing the page down key three times, then set all the values for the keyframes to zero. Now, highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease keyframes, open the graph editor tool, then pull the right side of the curve all the way inwards for every keyframe to smooth out their animations. Lastly, go to effect, color correction, and tint to make the footage black and white. And now we have this awesome distorted reveal effect for the footage in our composition. If you like the style of motion graphics in this video and you want a quick and easy way to add them to your projects with the click of a button, check out our brand new Pulse Pack. It includes over 150 stylized motion graphics to enhance your projects and make them stand out. With our easy to use Atom X extension, all you have to do is find a graphic you like and hit apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can easily customize the composition with our simple to use control layers and edit the different elements to fit your needs. And just like that, you have a stunning custom composition to use in your projects. Check out the link in the description or visit sondukfilm.com for more info. For this next technique, we're going to use shape layers and some blurs to create this cool light beam effect behind our footage layer. First, go up and select the rectangle tool, make sure fill is set to solid color, the color is set to white, stroke is set to none, then click and drag to make a rectangle that's the same shape as our footage layer. Now, press Ctrl D to duplicate this layer, set the color of the new layer to black, go to effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur, and set the blur radius to 10. Next, highlight Shape Layer 1, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Radial Fast Blur, and Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise HLS. In the Effect Controls panel, set the Y value for Center to 0, Amount to 90, and Lightness to 50%. Now hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch next to Noise Phase to open the Expression Controls panel and type in Time Asterisk 1000. This is going to animate the noise so that it gives off a TV static type effect. Lastly, drag the footage layer so it's above the two shape layers and now you have this cool textured light ray effect coming off of the footage. For the third technique, we're going to be setting up and animating our text layers as well as adding another light ray effect like the one that we just did. Here we have our basic text layer and we're going to start by adding a reveal animation. To do this, open up the text layer, click the arrow next to animate, and select position. Next, set the Y value for position to 50, click Add, Property, Opacity, 
Set the opacity to 0%, open the range selector tab, set a keyframe for start, move forward a bit in the timeline and set start to 100%. Open the advanced tab, set based on to lines, highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease keyframes, and adjust the curve in the graph editor just like we did earlier. Next, move to the beginning of the timeline, press P to adjust the position, set a keyframe, move forward about 2 seconds in the timeline, decrease the Y value by about 50, and make the keyframes easy ease. Hold down the ALT key and click the stopwatch for position, then type in loop out with a capital O, parentheses, quotation mark, ping pong, and it should autofill. This will make it so that the animation loops by going back and forth infinitely. Now that we have our text animated, we're going to pre-compose it and name that pre-comp to text. Highlight the pre-comp, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, highlight the first pre-comp, reduce its scale by 10%, then duplicate it again and repeat this process until you have 5 text pre-comps that are stacked in front of each other like this on the composition. Next, duplicate the top text layer, rename it to text light, put it underneath of all the other text layers, go to effect, Blur and Sharpen, Radial Fast Blur, and Effect, Generate, Fill. In the Effect Controls panel, set the Y value for Center to 800, the Amount to 85, and set the Color of the Fill to White. Lastly, offset the 5 text layers by a bit on the timeline to create a wave effect with their position animations. And now you have this cool set of animated text with a depth perspective effect and offset animation. For this final technique, we're going to use expressions to animate a texture to spice up the background of our composition. Here in our composition I've added a new layer, and it's a simple texture PNG I got from a stock footage website. Just go to one of these websites and search texture PNG and you'll be able to find tons of images just like this one. To start, what we're going to do is increase the scale of the texture by about 300% so when we add the expressions it has room to move around without getting cut off. Next, press the P key, then hold down the ALT key and click the stopwatch for position and type in wiggle parentheses 24 comma 100. Highlight this expression and press Ctrl C to copy it, then open the rotation by pressing the R key, ALT click the stopwatch and paste the same expression into the expression control. The animation as it is now is way too fast, so to slow it down we'll add an adjustment layer by going to layer, new, adjustment layer, Put it only above the texture layer and nothing else, then go to Effect, Time, Posterize Time, and set the frame rate to 6. This will lower the frame rate of any layer underneath of the adjustment layer so it isn't moving as fast and it's easier to look at. Lastly, we're going to add another adjustment layer. Go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, set the noise amount to 15%, and uncheck Use Color Noise. And there you have it. With all these techniques combined, we've created this amazing and visually striking composition in no time at all. You know, when you have motion graphics of style and a awesome voice like Jordan does, man, you just get the perfect package for, you know, tutorials. So I hope you found this video informative and, you know, breathtaking from Jordan Bertone. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button because if you don't, I'm going to cry a little bit. But you can also hit us up on Instagram. We have tutorials on there every single week. And always be creative.